The new AMD Ryzen 2400G is a very exciting APU as it sports the most powerful integrated graphics with results similar to Nvidia's GT1030. In this video, I'll be testing 35 games from various genres to help you get an idea what can be played on the integrated graphics. Please note that all these games were running at 1080p unless stated otherwise. The APU was never overclocked during the test and the RAM I used was 16GB of Course of Vengeance running at 3200 MHz. Come to the Vega terminal and I'll give you what you need. So let's get the ball rolling with some light indie games. Super Meat Boy runs at 60 frames per second without breaking a sweat. Castle crashes at 1080p with a new 60 frames per second patch is another flawless victory for this chip. Gunman Clive 2, an underrated Mega Man style game, hands in 60 frames per second with max settings. Shantae Half Genie Hero runs without a hitch using DirectX 11. Bit Trip Runner 2, another solid performer with a locked 60 frames per second. Cuphead, a game that can run on anything, has no issues running smoothly on the 2400G. Then finally we have Battleship Brigades running at 60 frames per second. An awesome game that combines cooking and puzzle solving. Let's move into AAA territory of Half-Life 2 Lost Coast, which has an excellent benchmark tool. On the highest settings across the board, we can achieve an average of 59.71 frames per second. Any VAL game with the Source engine is an easy victory on this chip. That includes games like Counter-Strike, Left 4 Dead, Portal and of course Half-Life. To validate my assumption, I spent some time with Left 4 Dead 2. On max settings, this game was able to hit 60 frames per second during an intense moment using weather effects. And yes, you're watching the uncensored version, which is legally available for my fellow Australians as free DLC. In your face, Michael Atkinson. Telltale Games doesn't have the best reputation when it comes to optimization of consoles, but the PC ports usually command low requirements. Tales from the Borderlands at 1080p with high settings and anti-aliasing runs at a flawless 60 frames per second. So if you're a fan of Telltale games, the 2400G has you covered. Batman Arkham Origins with normal settings and physics switched off, hands in an average of 59 frames per second. Tomb Raider 2013 at high settings, scored an average of 56.6 frames per second. Dropping the graphics to medium will help the game hit a more consistent 60 frames per second. Valkyra Chronicles, one of my favourite games of all time, runs smoothly at 60 frames per second on this APU. Sleeping Dog Definitive Edition with normal settings and motion blur switched off, presented an average of 53.1 frames per second. Capcom is a prolific developer in the PC space and many of the games contain a handy benchmark tool. Resident Evil 5's benchmark at max settings with motion blur switched off hands in an average of 58.8 frames per second. The more demanding Resident Evil 6 benchmark is all over the place at max settings, with a frame rate reaching a high of 55 frames per second and a low of 23. Regardless of which settings I used, I couldn't get a stable level of performance until I dropped the actual resolution. I recommend a drop to 900p and 720p while using the game's built-in 30fps cap. Devil May Cry 4 Special Edition fares much better at the high settings and 2 times MSAA, giving us a nice average of 60 frames per second. Driving games usually have low requirements, and the genre is being represented by Codemasters. Grid 2 with a medium preset and 4 times MSAA handed an average of 59.9 frames per second. Grid Autosport with the same settings enjoyed an average of 52.27 frames per second. Dirt Free with a high preset and 2 times MSAAA achieved an average of 62.59 frames per second. The more recent Dirt Rally with CMAA and the medium preset scored an average of 59.88 frames per second. Another genre that sports low requirements is fighting games. In the left corner we have Ultra Street Fighter 4 max settings with 4 times MSAA. It's a knockout with an average of 72 frames per second. In the right corner we have Guilty Gear XR Sign, holding its own at a locked 60 FPS at 1080p with SMAAA. Now it's time for some Metal Gear, it can't be. We have Ground Zeroes running on the lowest settings at 1080p, and has no problem staying in the 50 FPS range. The Fox engine was designed to run on both the PS3 and the PS4, which benefit the PC space with the game running superbly on less powerful computers. On the other side of the coin, we have Metal Gear Rising. 
Using the low preset gave me similar results to Ground Zeroes with metrics in the 50 FPS range. Visual novels are becoming very popular on Steam and sadly the only one in my collection is Psychopath's Mandatory Happiness. I'm a huge fan of the anime and this doesn't present much of a challenge for this APU. Granted these can literally run on a potato but I'm trying to do a comprehensive test. Another genre that's often overlooked is typing games and the genre is represented by the typing of the dead, overkill. At 1080p with anti-aliasing, it runs at 60 frames per second and is highly educational. To round off the oddball genres, we have the Talos Principle, an excellent puzzle game from the makers of Serious Sam. Using the auto detect settings, we get an average of 59.9 frames per second. Then I thought it might be fun to look at some games that are universally loathed, like Umbrella Cores, my least favorite game of 2016. At 1080p with the lowest settings the game runs okay but the frame rate dips as soon as you start shooting at well anything. I also tried Yaiba Ninja Gaiden Z, a game that was critically panned but the PC port is really well optimized and it could easily hit 60 frames per second on the highest settings at 1080p. Time to raise the bar with Doom 2016. By using the Vulkan API it's possible to run this game on slower machines. I'm using Vulkan with Adaptive VSync and TSAAA. This allows me to run the game at 1080p with medium settings and the frame rate rarely drops below 30 FPS. Let's kick the APU in the guts with Quantum Break. This is one of the most demanding games in the market but you can still reach a lock 30 frames per second on the 2400G. I'm using the low preset with VSync, screen space effects switched off and engage the 30 FPS limit. But more importantly I enable the upscaling option which takes a low resolution image and converts it to a higher one using a temporal reconstruction. The result is a softer looking presentation, but one that allows this game to cruise at a locked 30 frames per second. On the bright side, the incredible cutscenes are pre rendered videos and still look good regardless of the system's horsepower. Of course, not every game will run on this chipset. Wolfenstein The Old Blood at 720p with the lowest settings and VSync turned off runs below the 20 FPS line, and Shadow Warrior 2 caused the entire computer to crash. Guess I was just too much wang for them to handle. Then there's Super Dimension Neptune vs Sega Hard Girls which has um, unique results. At least it runs at 1080p and 60 frames per second, but the shading glitch makes you feel like you're um, for the lack of a better term, makes you feel like you're tripping balls. But despite these odd cases, the 2400G ran just about every game I threw at it. Even games with shoddy performance could be rectified with a few adjustments. Having said that, I still think this chip is best reserved for playing indie games, older games, or optimized games like Doom 2016. I can definitely see this APU becoming a favorite amongst gamers on a budget, or someone building a super tiny mini ITX computer.